Hi, welcome back. Um, I, if you're new to my channel, <laughs> I will be doing like reading books for children, maybe even some stories for older people, just because I like reading and figure it's a way to share. And you can either watch me read, or you could even just put it on in the background and listen, because I know sometimes I do that with YouTube, as I put on a channel and I just have it in the background as a background noise, and it's just enjoyable so that you don't feel alone or whatever, you know? But um, also, we'll be doing other things, but today, today I'm reading, and I'm going to read one of my favorite books. It's from my childhood. It's called King of the Dollhouse. I hope you can see the picture there. It's by Patricia Clapp. Um, you can see it's a really worn copy because it's older, it's mine. So let's get started. Oh, drat, said the tiniest voice in the world. In the hushed softness of the summer night, Ellie could just hear the sounds, which seemed to come from somewhere beside her bed. Double drat, where is the light? Ellie's eyes opened suddenly, and she lay very still listening. There was a small bumpy noise, and then the tiniest voice said, Oh, ow, that wretched girl, she's been changing the furniture around. Ow, my knee! Not at all sure whether she should be awake or was dreaming, Ellie rolled over just as one of the little lamps in her dollhouse turned on, and she almost fell out of her bed with surprise. Well, at last, said the tiny voice, that's better. What's better, whispered Ellie. And there's the king in the dollhouse. Oh, are you awake, said the tiny voice. The light is better, of course. How can I read the paper if I can't find the light? I don't know, said Ellie. Nor I, said the tiny voice. If you must change the furniture around, you might at least leave the light on. I whacked my knee against that desk very hard. I'm sorry, whispered Ellie. Slowly, she hung the top half of herself out of bed, propped her hands on the floor, trying to see into the dollhouse living room. Then, in surprise, she plopped down to the bed completely and landed hard on the fuzzy rug. Goodness, said the tiny voice. You sound like an earthquake. In a little blue velvet wing chair sat a very small man with a fat tummy. Reading the dollhouse newspaper, he was about six inches high and he wore a gold crown. Red and white striped breeches and little red slippers, long red velvet cape. And after a moment, he looked up. Good evening, he said. Ellie rubbed her eyes very hard to be sure she wasn't asleep. Who are you, she asked. King Bora Bora, said the little man. Oh, said Ellie. And then she added politely, my name is Ellie. How do you do, said the little man, indicating the newspaper with one very small finger. He went on. You wouldn't by chance have a more recent paper, would you? I must have read this one at least a dozen times. I only have one, Ellie said, and that's it. What a pity, although I admit it's better than the last place I lived. That dollhouse had nothing to read except books that didn't open. Very difficult to improve one's mind by reading books that don't open. And there's little Ellie watching King Bora Bora. This is Lenny. He's my kitty. He's 14. He's not part of the book. <laughs> there was a silence while King Bora Bora went on reading the newspaper, and Ellie went on staring at him. Presently, King Bora Bora glanced at her over the paper. We appreciate your bowing to royalty, he said, but you you may rise now. Uh, um, if I rise, I won't be able to see you. Poor eyesight? Certainly not, but you're very small. You are very big, said King Bora Bora. Not really. I'm just right for my size. And I'm just right for my size. There was another small silence. Where did you come from? Ellie asked. The little man gave her an infinitesimal sigh and laid the newspaper down on the table next to the blue velvet winger. It's really most impossible to read the paper with you chattering all the time, he said. He got up, scratched his fat little tummy, and looked, started look, stood looking at her. You ask a great many personal questions, he asked, said sternly. Well, it is my dollhouse, and I do think I have a right to know how you got there. Through the door. It was not locked. Oh, have you been coming here every night after I'm asleep? For quite some time, yes. I find the place well suited to the needs of my children and myself. Ellie gasped, children? What children? The royal babies, of course. Where are they? I don't see any babies. They are, I sincerely hope, asleep upstairs, said the king. I want to see them. King Borobor glared at her warningly. If you turn on a light and they all wake up and cry, you will have to put them back to sleep again. Oh my, look at that dollhouse. See all the rooms? Looks like a really nice dollhouse. You see little King Bora Bora right down here? Now let's see what, what's going on with the babies. Ellie got up on her knees and tried to see into the dollhouse bedrooms. There was only one little light on and she had to put her head very close, but then she could see that there were some of the beds. There were several little bumps under the beds 
And from time to time, one of those little humps wiggled slightly. They're teeny, she breathed. You certainly don't expect babies to be full grown, do you? But there seemed to be quite a lot of them. Eleven, the last count. All the same size? Certainly. Oh, I wish I could hold one. Time enough that for you when they wake up in the morning. I just only just got them all to sleep. You mean, Ellie sank on her knees, heels, you mean you'll still be here in the morning? You're going to stay? Do you object? Now that you know we are here, there seems little point in dashing off into the sunrise every day. They don't appear to be any other tenants, and it's the most convenient residence. If there are other tenants, I have dolls who are supposed to live in there, but I put them all away in my dresser. That seems rather high-handed of you, said the king. What had the dolls done to deserve such treatment? Nothing, said Ellie. That's the trouble. They just sat there with their legs sticking straight out, and they stared, and I tried to stand them up, and they fell over. And they never curled up in bed like people. The house seemed real, and the dolls didn't, so I put them away. Hmm, said the king. Well, the doll's loss seemed to be our gain. I trust it is permissible for us to remain here for a while. Oh, yes, said Ellie happily. For as long as you like, she paused. And then she thought, then she added thoughtfully, I'm not sure how I'll explain you to my parents. You, you must admit you're a little hard to believe in your majesty. I can see no reason at all to admit that. I have never had the slightest difficulty believing in me. But now believing in you, that's another matter. Ellie decided to ignore the remark. Instead, she said, do the babies have a mother? The king's voice was impatient. Naturally, they have a mother. Did you ever hear of a baby who didn't? Then where is she? The queen, said the little man. He walked to the front dollhouse mantle and looked closely at the miniature clock that stood there. The clock always said 20 minutes past 10, which was as good a time as any other. At this particular moment, I imagine she's a mouseback riding, he said casually. Mouse back riding, said Ellie. There is no reason to sound surprised, said the king. The queen is a very proficient mouse equestrian. Of course, it's not the sort of sport I would choose for myself. What sort of sport would you choose, Ellie asked. Well, preferably none. I leave that sort of thing to the queen. I am more of a homebody. I prefer keeping the house tidy and caring for the children and supervising their diet. What do they eat? Peanut butter, said the king. That's all, said Ellie. Just just peanut butter for breakfast and lunch and supper and in between times and on their birthdays? Just just peanut butter? Just peanut butter, said the king firmly. Oh, well that makes feeding them very simple, doesn't it? We have plenty of peanut butter. Good, you had better deliver it rather early in the morning. The babies get up early and they are always hungry. And now that I think of it, if you'll excuse me, I shall go upstairs to bed. He stretched delicately covered a yawn with one tiny hand. I am not one for late nights, he added. But the queen, won't she be coming home, asked Ellie. Probably not this evening, said King Bora Bora. She had arranged to go out on mouseback moth hunt with a group of friends, and they carry glowworms, you see, and the lights attract the moths. Now, if you'll pardon me, he walked out of the dollhouse living room and into the hall. Whining, yawning, yawning widely and not bothering to cover it up, he went upstairs. Oh, this is Miss Lexi Maymay. You forgot to put your living room light on, said Ellie. The king stopped on the stairs and looked at her. If you are going to do the honors of inhabiting this humble quarters, he said, the very least you can do is turn on the light after we have reached the upper store floor safely. The very least. Look at, there's her house and her room. That's a nice sized dollhouse for the king and his family. Then with his chin in the air, he went up to the stairs and into one of the bedrooms and Ellie watched him turn back the covers and climb into the little bed where he curled up comfortably. Your majesty, she said softly, you forgot to take off your, your, your crown and your robe. But there was only the tiniest sort of a snore from the bed. Smiling to herself, Ellie turned off the dollhouse lamp and got into her own bed. I don't believe it, she said, but wouldn't it be wonderful if it was true? And in two seconds, she was asleep. So we will continue on to the next chapter and find out more about those peanut butter babies. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy it.